Yo, Snap Tesla, this is article out like yesterday talking about how an Australian household that had a Tesla power wall and solar system installed back in January basically reduced their uh, quarterly electricity bill from $600 to $40. So this family paid for a 5 kilowatt uh, solar system array and a 7 kilowatt power wall battery system for a total of $15,000 after a $3,900 rebate. So it's still quite a large initial investment, but the cool thing is they're only paying 59 cents per day for electricity, and so their payback period uh, is only six to seven years, and that's insane. I remember when the power wall was first announced last year, all the typical pessimists and naysayers all, all jumped on board and basically worked out the calculations and worked out that it would take 20, 30 years to pay back, so it wasn't really worth it. But obviously technology is not static, so you can't look at something and then just determine that, oh, it's not worth it. Um, and obviously it's not linear, so you can't look at it that way. It's exponential. It doubles every year or halves in price. So I've done videos before explaining that solar is an exponential technology and that within about 12 to 13 years, we'll have 100% solar. Um, but I'm actually revising that now. Here's a plan to do it in 10 years. I guess so here's a very, very rough plan for how we can actually achieve 100% solar just in Australia within the next 10 years. So by 2027, let's work at that target and then work backwards. Okay, so step one, what you can do is actually use the Google Maps API and a little bit of like image processing uh, algorithms or something like the satellite companies that are coming out online now where they have constellations of satellites and API access. So we could have run a, a quick, massive big data analysis and just run a query over all of Australia and pull up every single rooftop of every single property in Australia and its size, its surface area. Then do some further analysis on that to basically look at the type of roof and work out exactly what surface area on that roof is actually usable for a solar cell array. Step two would be to map all the power stations we currently use, uh, how much they, power they generate, what they use, um, their cost per watt, because each power station has a certain cost per watt, and their reach. Step three would be to pair all this data with demographic data, things like looking at population density of that area, and is there enough rooftop surface area for solar arrays to generate enough electricity for that population. And step four, like once you've got all this data, the whole point of that exercise is to really generate a ranked list, a target list of areas of suburbs where you can start at first, where it will have the most impact because, for example, your ranking factors might be that uh, a certain power station is more environmentally damaging than others, or it's maybe government-owned, so it, uh, you know, there's an incentive to shut that down to save taxpayer money. Or even that a certain power station basically just costs more per watt than other power stations, so it's more expensive to run. Um, and so there's an incentive to kind of decentralize all the power in that area first. And now you've got like a ranked list of every single area in Australia um, where you need to target first. And all you need to do is like work out how do you incentivize that to happen within the 10-year timeline. Now what the government can do is basically create a subsidy system that is staged, rather than just releasing a, a broad subsidy system for everyone in Australia, which is super costly, you'd stage it. So maybe they could say something like, okay, cool, your, your suburb is now eligible for this subsidy, and the subsidy could be either like massive, like at least half the whole cost of the system, or 100%. Or perhaps even half of the, the cost of the installation could be a subsidy, and the other half could be an interest-free loan, which is just paid back over 10 years or whatever. You can even create some type of incentive system for property investors to actually, um, and landlords to install solar cell systems and have their tenants kind of pay back that interest-free loan as part of their rent over time. And obviously within each area, it wouldn't be the government installing these things. The government would be offering, su offering subsidies and allowing private enterprise, you know, groups like Tesla and others to install these solar cell systems and batteries. For areas of high density, where things like apartment blocks, where you get a lot of people living under a small surface area uh, on the roof, one thought I had was that you can actually connect all these buildings together with underground cables. So that any excess power generation from one, one particular building actually helps recharge the batteries in another. And it kind of acts like it's still a decentralized system, but it's kind of like a little mini grid. Yeah, so I think this basic plan of just using a, a very targeted list of big data to identify the target areas where you get the most bang for your buck, and then government subsidy system, it means there's very little cost and very little risk to the government. It will remove the need for governments to invest in capital intensive projects, things like uh, huge uh, wind farms, things like nuclear plants, things like more coal plants, and instead it allows us to decentralize that process. And because this is a stage plan, it's actually leveraging exponential technology so that every year these solar cells and these batteries will get cheaper, which means the cost for the government is also cheaper every year this program runs. So let's not be your thoughts, I future. How do you think we can make this happen? And how do you think we can actually achieve 100% decentralized solar within 10 years, not just in Australia, but elsewhere, all around the world?